Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another video. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to paint a black Templar. Now this video contains no airbrush work. That's a slight lie, but trust me, it's, it's okay. And it doesn't contain the guide on how to do the face, which you can see in this video. Uh, nor does it contain the guide on how we did the shoulder pad. That was a video that was put up on Patreon. So you can check that one out over there. Links to Patreon will be in the video description below. So do check that out. And thank you to everyone that supports me on Patreon because you are literally keeping somewhere in the region of about 30 something lights on right now. So thank you very much. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint all of the armor for a Black Templar. I'm also gonna show you how I paint my red as well to get that really deep, but still vibrant and very full colored red. For this video, we used an Indomitus Chaplain, which we gave away over on Twitch. If you'd like the chance to win a mini, come and join in on the live stream. At the end of every month, one lucky subscriber gets a mini painted by me in a color scheme of their choice. Going into next month, you can look forward to seeing guides on how to paint a digital desert camouflage Calexus assassin. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. And a Harlequin Shadow Seer painted in a beautiful color scheme, uh, very inspired by one of my favorite Instagram artists. So you'll have to come and join the stream to find out more about that. But in this video, let's start off with the black and my tiny little bit of a lie about the airbrush. Let's get to it. Right, so here's all the colors we've used for the armor. Black, Incubi Darkness, Rust Gray, Administratum Gray, Kid Red Base, and Flash Kits Yellow, of course, for the cloaks. We've got Steel Legion Drab, Menoth White Base, and Highlight for all of the bone parts of the armor and parchment. The Dwarven Gold, Purple Tone, Flesh Wash, and Silver for the metals. Let's get to it. So when you're painting black, it's very, very important. You know exactly what your base color is. And we know it's black, don't comment. Duh, but it's black. We know. Unfortunately, not all blacks are created equal. And um, when I primed this miniature using my Vallejo Polyurethane Black Airbrush Primer, I knew that that black, because it dries very matte, was going to be a kind of really dark charcoal grey. And what I really wanted was black. And so I took the airbrush and I just gave the model a quick once over of Thamar Black from P3, which is my favourite black. It's not as satin as GW's Abaddon Black, but it's fairly close. So it gives me something where the highlights are still where I want them to be, but it does give a really solid black to go from. Now, just because I use the airbrush for this step for speed doesn't mean that you need to. Just take some black, thin it down, apply a couple of coats till you're happy that your base black is something you can replicate. And that's the important part right there. If you make a mistake, if you need to add some shadow back somewhere, you know exactly what the base black for this miniature is. You can just grab your Thamar black, your Abaddon black, your Vallejo black, your... I don't care what black. Just make sure it's a good black. And you can add some shadow. You can cover up that mistake. And that's why this step is really important when painting black. Don't just grab your can of rattle can black, all over the mini and then paint some highlights because if you go wrong it's not going to work you can't just put black over it it's a different black and suddenly everything changes so this step pretty important once you've got that down let's put the airbrush away give it a clean and you can see how to clean it properly in this video and then let's get the brushes out and get some black painted the first thing we're doing with our highlights is a mixture of black and incubi darkness. Now, as you can see in the little window in window, we're doing a fairly dark mix of this. We want to get a nice, really good introduction into our highlights as we move throughout the figure. So once you've got that mixed and thinned nice, you can start painting downwards onto all of our armor panels. So starting with a leg here, you can see our brush strokes moving in the direction of least to most impact on the miniature. And that's really important. Right, so the method of shading we're doing here is what's called volumetric highlights, which is a Ponzi artist term for shade it to make it look like it's 3D. Now, for those of you that went to school, probably most of you, and for those of you that paid attention, maybe not as many of you, 
Remember when you were in like art class or whatever and they made you draw a circle and then shade the circle so you've got a bright bit and then some like less bright bits to make it look like it's 3D. Literally all you're doing is that. Let's not overcomplicate things. All you need to do is find where you think the bright bit is and start painting a highlight. And as long as you paint this nice and thin, by the time we've worked through our progression of highlights for our volumetric highlighting, you'll have something that's got nice conical shapes, nice spherical shapes. And for the areas that don't quite fit, you'll at least have a cool gradient. And that's literally all you need to do in this step. Keep building up your volumes all over with that initial pass until you're happy. You've got everything that should be highlight. Highlight? Should have a highlight. Let's go with that. Then add some Fenrisian Grey to the mix. Now, don't worry if your blends look a little bit scratchy. We're going to do one step at the end, which will tie all of this together. All you need to do is keep moving your brush in that absolutely imperative uh, direction. You want to go from a point of least impact to most impact on the model. So what I mean by that is in this situation, we're applying a highlight. So move from the area you want the darkest part of the model to be to the area you want the brightest part of the model to be. And as we work through our highlights, adding in even more gray, this time administratum gray, you'll notice that we're going to continue doing that with every single one of our highlights. This is because when the brush leaves the miniature, a little extra bit of paint gets pulled off of the brush by the sort of surface tension and capillary action of the two things working together to just put an extra bit of a deposit on the miniature. What we don't want is that deposit to happen when we're trying to get our gradient, our transition to move from the light part into the dark part. So keep moving your brush in this direction. Turn the model, put it upside down if you need to. Whatever you've got to do, make sure that you get that happening. Also, at this stage, start building in some nice sharp highlights. So here you saw we did a little nice line down the leg where I feel the brightest part of that leg would be. The biggest highlight there, for instance. And then once you've done that, keep feathering them out. We're not yet at the stage where we're going to edge highlight things. We've still got a little bit of a way to go between now and then. So take your time, but just start the process of getting those final highlights blocked in. If you go wrong and you put something on, you think, you know what, that's not really where I needed it to be. You can always go back to a previous part of your mix and then just take that out. Very simple, very straightforward. And this is why whenever you're using a progressive mix of colors, a set of blends such as this one, we've added even more Administratum Grey to now. It's always good to keep all of those in sequence. It means if you do make a mistake, you can go back. And if you do make a mistake with your brushwork, like I'm going to do here on the miniature on that lower leg panel very soon, then don't worry because you can always just go and tidy it up with some black as we do a recess shade later on. That's why it's super important, like we said earlier on in the video, to ensure that whenever you start a process, when you're going to apply black to a miniature and highlight that up, you get a strong base color you can always go back to. You know exactly what that is. Now, as you're applying more and more highlights, keep them nice and thin and get them even thinner each time you put a coat on. We want that progression. So we've got to start with a fat, like quite a large coat of paint and then work into thinner and thinner coats of paint as we go. And this way we get that progression. Start hitting all of those highlight lines one more time to be sure that they get brighter as they go as well, because that is the brightest part of the model. And just keep working through until you're satisfied that every armor panel on the mini has this kind of style. Now you can of course do this with an airbrush. And I've got a great Patreon guide on how to paint black the cool way using paints that unfortunately you can't get anymore, which is why we've done this one. But if you want a YouTube video, we did a Legion of the Damned color scheme on a Marine not that long ago. And you can see exactly where I place my highlights. So that might help you out as well. Why don't you check out that video too? With this highlight, we're just getting in all of the final sort of spots here and there on the miniature. So here on the back pack, you can see we're just getting in to those little uh, sort of peaks at the bottom of those troughs. That made no sense whatsoever of my mouth, but it did in my head. And hopefully... Once you've finished, you've got something that looks a little bit like this. Now, if, like I did just here, I made a mistake, I can take some black paint, I can put in a shade and just get rid of that. We don't need to have the cleanest blends as we go through, but obviously we should be trying to work tidily. 
But if you do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Tidy it up a little bit doing this sort of thing and you'll be fine, no issues. Now I want you to mix up a glaze of black. So just use the same black you made a base coat uh, for your miniature with and then thin it right down to a glaze. Maybe go back to that how to thin paint properly video if you need to. Keep working in the same direction as before, least to most impact. And you'll notice that this is giving you a really good coat of black that's just gonna help to bring everything together. Some of those rougher blends will be smoothed out by this process and you'll end up with something that on the whole is a lot more sort of together than it was previously. So I think this looks pretty good by now, but we've got a couple of other things to do. We need to get our black paint again, thin it down ever so slightly to a recess shade. And this is gonna help really bring out all of the detail on the miniature. Adding in a recess shade basically outlines all the areas there, and that helps us a lot. We're also gonna go back to a highlight mix and now add in a little bit of battle damage. You can do as much or as little here as you want to. And if you feel that any of the highlights you've put on have been dulled ever so slightly by that black glaze, just a little bit too much, you can of course bring those out a bit as well. Less is more with this sort of thing. If you do too much, then it can be a little overpowering. Then we're gonna mix a red and black mix up, four parts red to one part black, thin it slightly with water and start working on all of the red elements of the mini the bolt gun, the capes, the book, lock stock, the lot. So in the exact same way that we painted the black with our volumetric colors, we're doing the same thing with the red. So all we need to do is keep working up a progression, adding more and more red to the mix until you get to the point where you're fully saturated with red. Now what that means, to avoid using another arty term, is that your red is as red as it can possibly be. It doesn't matter how much more red you add to the mix and how many more coats you add to the miniature, the red that you've got there is full red. It's the same as the red paint that you've got. Now to get from where we are now to there, you wanna use several thin coats. So just keep building up a little bit more red into your mix each time. Make your paints as thin as you can without it taking forever to cover the surface. We're not looking to glaze these on, we're looking for something that's got good enough coverage, but you want a nice progression. So each coat of paint that you put on, apply two or three times in slightly smaller stages. So you put your first pass on, and then you put your second pass on, slightly smaller than that with the same mix, and your next pass on, slightly smaller with the same mix before you start adding more red to your mix or before you get to those final highlights where we're adding in just a smidge of yellow to bring us to a nice warm, still very red, orange. By the time you've done that, you will have got a nice smooth progression from our darkest red that we've used mixed with black right the way up to our brightest, most warm and vibrant red. Remember, because you're using paint that's not gonna give you full opacity every time, you can do this, and you can do this with any paint you want to as well. It's a really good way of establishing a nice highlight and a blend across a surface. Great painting tip for all of you out there. When you finish your red, this is what it all looks like. Nice, smooth transitions all over the place, very dramatic. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about filters, which is kind of another artsy term, but we're gonna break it down really simple. The way I paint my gold is a base coat of some really strong, powerful gold, such as the Scale 75 Dwarven Gold. And if you've not tried it, you should definitely give it a go. GW's closest product is Retributor Armor, and it doesn't really come close to just how good this paint from Scale is. It brushes well, airbrushes well, definitely check it out. I think it's cheaper as well. So another good plus point. Once you've got that base coat and it's dry, what we're gonna do is gonna paint two washes over it. And the reason behind this is because of these things called filters. Now, the first wash that goes over the top of it is our purple wash. Now the reason that purple works is to do with color theory. And we don't have time for that in this video, but to give you a very simple lie, it makes the shadows really stand out. Just go with that for now. We'll talk about the other in another video. Once you've put that on there, we've got a color that looks a little bit on the odd side. It doesn't really look how we want our gold to be, which is rich and full of luster and like a nice antique cared for thing. So now we take a flesh wash and put that over the top. Now you might be thinking, why don't you just mix the two? And this is why that doesn't work. 
When you apply a coat of paint over something, what you're essentially doing is putting a tint over the object. If your paint is 100% opaque, instead of that tint, you'll just paint it. But if you've got paint that isn't, such as a wash or a glaze or whatever, then you're just giving a nice sort of feel to that. So what we're doing by adding this purple to it is we're getting a nice feel of an antique gold on our surface. But we've already changed the properties of our base gold. By adding a second wash over the top of that, we're doubling down on this process and we're changing it twice. So rather than having one thing that we've tinted one color and then put a highlight on, we've tinted it twice, which then allows us to go back to our original gold for our highlights. By doing this, you get something that has a bit more of its original color and that power really shines through, which is why I love painting gold this way. You don't have to go straight from gold and a wash to a silver highlight. We can go back to our original gold and then we can mix in a little bit of silver with that to give it those nice, final, bright highlights. At the end of the process, what you're left with is gold that's definitely gold. You don't have anything that's a bit washed out. You don't have anything that looks like it's brass. It's fully gold. And that, for me, makes this process worth taking the extra time to do those two washes. Now you've already seen the skulls because they were fully painted during the drying process for the gold, but for the sake of the video, I wanted to keep everything together. Here you can see we're base coating all of the skulls and the parchment too, using the Steel Legion Drab. Now for me, this is a great base coat for bone because it mixes in well with things like this, the Menoth White base, and later on the Menoth White highlight to start building some very soft, changes from one paint to another. Sometimes with a transition, you don't want it to be super harsh and abrupt. And on softer things like this, it works really, really well. So add in more Menoth White base as you go, build up the brightness on the skull using the same kind of volumetric highlighting style that you have been on the rest of the miniature. So find the areas that you think should catch more light and apply a highlight. As you start to brighten up the mix using some Menoth White Highlight, focus your highlights more on the areas towards the top of the skull. Make your highlights smaller, again, as you have been doing for the entirety of the mini. And just keep working away until you're happy with the placement of your highlights and the brightness of your highlights. You can essentially go until you've got full opacity of the Menoth White. You don't want to go any brighter than that because it starts to get into an almost pure white, which really washes everything out. And we want that kind of natural dark bone sort of color to all of this. For the metals, all I did all over was some Vallejo Model Air Metallic Black Base and then some highlights with silver. You see we did that all over the skull chain and things like the uh, winged skull on the bolt pistol and all that sort of stuff. I didn't put it in the video because, to be honest, this is already getting long enough and it's kind of a, a straightforward thing to do, just paint some highlights. For the chain, all we did with this was affix some jewelish chain to both the bottom of the weapon and the mini's wrist with some super glue. And then once that was dry, held the mini at an angle and glued some of the links until we got the chain to come out in the shape that we wanted. You can play around with this as much if you want. And if you break it at any point during the painting process, just pop a little bit more super glue on and put it back in place. For all of the vents in the armor, the soft bits, I just had some black and white on the palettes and mix those, but you could use something like Eshin Grey from GW. And once you've got a base highlight on all of those, go on with a second highlight with either a little bit more white or something like Administratum Grey. For all of the parchment, we did a guide on how to do that not long ago, but for the writing, just use some Rhinoxide, thin it down nicely and add in a few horizontal stripes. That's about it for the video and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, leave a comment, like it, do all the usual YouTube-y things. If you want to see how we did the bases, you can find a guide on how we did that over on Patreon as well. But again, if you've enjoyed this, please let me know in the comment section. If there's something you didn't like about the video, hell, let me know about that one too. Thanks very much for watching guys and I will see you all in the streams. Peace out.